In this video series, we're going to take a look at this communications receiver that a lot of hams built back in the late 50s, early 60s. This is a night kit from Allied Radio, made in Chicago, Illinois. And this one is one of the first ones. Uh, as you will look at it, uh, a lot of people will identify it as the R100. This one actually is the 83YU726, or referred to as Y726. This is the predecessor to the R100, which later became the R100A. There's some differences. Um, a lot of people would say this is the 100, but the biggest difference is the logo here. If you'll notice, this is gray, and it's a K, uh, and red, front part of the K. This is the first one, which was the 83YU726. Now, when the, um, when the R100 came out, it had an italic K. The K was in italics. And the paint was gray and silver and on this one the paint is really really bad and we'll look at it a little bit closer when we start looking inside and around it this one is pretty rough shape hopefully we can do something with it but it was more like a uh, a sandy color and i'm going to have to look at some pictures try to match some paint because th there's not much paint to uh, try to match here and the R100A, which came out in about 1962, uh, it was gray and silver, and the antenna tuner was relocated on the front part of the panel. This is the antenna trim, um, or the antenna, yeah, the antenna trim. It was on the uh, 83, or they just basically call them Y726s and R100s. Uh, they were located here, and they're a different color. They're a brown knob as you can see this uh this has the optional uh s meter on it hopefully we can get that to work that's a little crooked but uh this came in kit form it uh it covers it has four bands which covers all the ham bands uh has a half a watt audio it's got nine tubes which will uh has 11 functions uh, some of the tubes are dual purpose tubes so it's actually like 11 tubes in there but we'll go in here and what my goal is to clean this up get it working refurbish it and actually use it and i'll show you what we're going to do later if and when we can get it i have no idea what's in the side of this cabinet i have not looked inside this cabinet yet so uh, it's a pretty good size um, unit and let's see we're looking at 16 and a half by nine and a half by ten so it's a pretty good size cabinet itself uh, not that heavy because it doesn't have a whole lot of transformer in it because it's not a transmitter or anything like that it's just a receiver so Let's take a closer look at the top, back, and sides, and we'll go from Let's there. Let's take a look at some of the um, controls. Uh, this is the on, off switch. It goes to off, to standby, receive, and calibrate. The standby is when you're using a transmitter, you flip it to standby so it mutes the receiver so you don't have feedback uh, from your transmitter. Of course, you turn it on receive to receive it. And if you have the optional uh, crystal calibrator in it, that's how you'd calibrate your dials, make sure you're on the right frequency. I don't know if this one has it or not. Uh, the Q, uh, QX selectivity, uh, that switches uh, uh, the, the Q multiplier, and this is the Q tune itself. This turns it on, off, peak, or null, the signal. 
This one is the BFO that is used strictly for CW and uh, or Morse code and single sideband. And the, uh, the manual volume control and the automatic volume control and the automatic no, 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 nose, automatic noise limiter is for voice and music. Uh, down here is the AF gain or the volume control. The BFO controls the tone and pitch of the uh, uh, Morse code signal and helps tune in the, uh, the signal itself. We've done talked about the uh, Q multiplier tune. Of course, the band switch A, B, C, and D, and the RF gain uh, reduces the sensitivity or brings up the sensitivity. Let's look at the back side. Got a little light on the subject, and you can see the paint is in terrible shape. It's flaking off. But uh, as you can see, it's a pretty good size. A little bit of rust. We'll have to do some de-rusting. A lot of work, a lot of metal work on, on this. You can see the, the paint chips are coming off. So it shouldn't be hard to strip, should it? Okay, on the back, as you can see, more paint. <laughs> shouldn't be hard to strip, should it? Anyway, S meter um, adjustment, eight ohm speaker. This is some sort of modification, probably some sort of, maybe a TR switch, I don't know, fuse. Uh, something for the remote don't know haven't read in the manual about that but we'll find out as we explore it and the ground and another and an antenna and also another antenna which is SO239 for the uh, for coax so let's take the lid off of it and see what it what see what it looks like okay got the lid off reason that front cover or that uh, escutcheon on the front was crooked as I think it was taped with the uh, masking tape. This is the S meter, the optional S meter. Um, I don't like the way that slug is sitting in that can, but it's got a printed circuit board. I've, I've heard about these. Of course, uh, prior residents there uh, it, and its children. And let's see, uh, there's the neighbors. They don't have any kids, I don't think. Anyway, um, looks like maybe a rat came in here. There's some more spiders. Of course, here's the antenna trimmer. It's a direct drive to here. That's kind of unique, isn't it? Uh, paint on the tuning condenser. But uh, you see the paint's flaking from the inside. <sighs> right, I may have dropped that on there. Pretty simple looking board. But uh, of course, we'll have to clean all this up. Uh, I think there's a bottom I have to take off. So let me flip that over and take the bottom off and see how molested it is under there. Okay, there's four screws holding the bottom of it. So let's kind of take a look in here. Uh, maybe I've got enough light or maybe too much. Don't know, let's see. Let's, let me reposition this just a bit. Okay, there's the bottom of the printed circuit board on the bottom. Uh, this looked like some sort of nut, so I guess the, the, the mouse is, this is what the mouse had left us. Um, there's another printed circuit board. This is the band switch board. That looks, aim that up here. You might be able to see a little bit better. The band switch board here. It's pretty fragile looking to me, but uh, hey, I think this has got the crystal calibrator in it right there. Nice. Um, coming from the transformer, some wires are cut off. I'm not sure what those were or why they're cut off. Um, but 
not really sure. Don't know where the filter caps are. I think they're under here from photos I've seen. Up, I guess it'd help if I show you up in the top. So, all in all, it's halfway clean in there. I'm just wondering how how it was constructed and of course it looks like somebody did it right they got the crystal calibrator and the estimator so this was probably somebody put uh, some money in i think i saw a catalog where it was like 104 dollars just the base kit so um back in late 50s so they probably got 150 dollars in this uh, in that day and that, that's pretty good money uh, if you relate it to today all right let's see let's figure out what we're going to do from here all right if you hear a buzzing in the background this is my fluorescent lights i've moved uh i've got two workshops now one in my ham shack one in the house if you see the dial lights are on i powered it up Check this out. A group from Italy who call themselves Change. At number 40, they debut with A Lover's Holiday. So I'm not going to do it long, so I'm going to turn it off. But we have a working unit. So I'm going to throw this out to you. The best way to do this, I think... And this is my opinion, and you guys let me know in the comments. I think totally disassemble it, clean it, bring it back as and build it from the kit. Um, and replace any parts that uh, are bad or out of tolerance. By taking it apart, and here's my, here's my argument. By taking it apart, I can clean it and get it shined up back to an almost new and I think this one deserves that. I really do. So tell me what you think in the comments. So that's going to do it for now. Just wanted to introduce it, get it out here. So from Larry from the hills of Tennessee, thanks for watching.